I did fill in the last blank on uh, page 9, so we don't have to worry about that. Do get your periodic tables out. Alrighty. Today is the last way to name ionic compounds. And on the first day that we named ionic compounds, we worked with metals out of group 1A, 2A, and 3A, where we knew that all the metals in group 1A had a plus 1 charge, all the metals in group 2A had a plus 2 charge, all the metals out of group 3A had a plus 3 charge. So they had a single charge. And then we talked about the non-metals in group 5 and 6 and 7A, where we said that if it's a 5A non-metal, it'll have a negative 3 charge. If it's a group 6A non-metal, it'll have a negative 2 charge. And if it's a group 7A non-metal, it'll have a negative 1 charge. We still want to keep that being true. Okay, So everything that we've done still applies. Nothing's going to change there. Then the second day that we talk about ionic compounds, we introduced the polyatomics. And I know you guys already have those memorized very well because it's on the video and you're good students, so yeah, you have those memorized. Um, if you're forgetting one or two of those, again, make flashcards, put on one side like acetate, on the other side C2H3O2 with a negative one charge. Flashcards are a great way to memorize it. Writing it, oh, I don't know, four or five hundred times is another way to remember it. Pretty much how I've done it. Um, so know how to name these. And then don't forget about removing one oxygen, how it, you drop the ATE and add ITE. If you drop two oxygens, it's now hypoite. And if you add one oxygen to any of these, except for acetate, hydroxide, and ammonium, so really only seven of these, uh, it'll be a per. So that was day two. Today, we're actually looking at the metals that are in the transition metal area. And if you look at those metals, you'll notice that they have a lot of oxidation numbers, or at least more than one. And we really have to look at our periodic table from this point forward whenever we're naming or writing formulas to make sure that we're actually using the correct charge. Because a lot of those metals in the transition metal area can have more than one charge. Now, if it only has one charge, we treat it like we did with the other compounds. For the metals in group 1A, 2A, and 3A, we didn't do anything special. So you'll do the same thing for those metals that only have one charge. However, if it has one, more than one charge today, we have to designate what that charge is. So if you look at, say, for example, element number 29, Cu, copper, what are the oxidation numbers there? Either a 2 or a 1. So what that means is copper can either be a plus one charge or a plus two charge. So how in the world are you going to know if it has a plus one or a plus two charge based on the name or the formula? Well, let's do an example. So if I have CuO, I could also have Cu2O. These are my two possible copper oxides that I could have. One of these has a plus one charge, the other has a plus two charge. How are we going to know? How would you know which one had the plus one or plus two charge? By what? By looking at the formula. So we're going to let the non-metal tell us what the charge on the metal is. So what's the charge on oxygen? Minus two, right? So we know that non-metals always have a negative charge. So if I have two coppers here, and we know that this needs to equal zero, what must the charge on this copper be? One. Plus one. And we only have one copper here, so what must its charge be? Two. Plus two. And notice how the formulas are different because the charges are different. Now, how can you express or communicate this to somebody and say, well, that copper has a plus two charge, this one has a plus one charge. Write it. We'll write it, but we have to write it in a very specific way. Remember when we were doing Roman numerals earlier? Oh no. We have to know our Roman numerals up to seven. Whoa. Okay. And I'll write those down real quick. This is one, two, three. How do I write four? 
Five, you write a one before a five. Right. So it's I before, <coughs> I'm sorry, IV for four, and then it's one after V for more. Okay. So five and then six, and that's all you got to know. Okay. Because if I look on my periodic table, I'm trying to remember who has the plus seven. Manganese has a plus seven that we care about. Uh, that's about it, I think. Ooh, osmium has a plus eight. Better make sure you know eight. Yeah. Whoa. So you got to know your Roman numerals up to eight. Okay. So the Roman numeral is actually going to tell us what the charge on the metal is. So if I'm looking at, say... This formula here, I have copper, and what's the charge on this copper metal? Plus two. So I'm going to put a Roman numeral two here, and then write oxide. So what that's saying is that the charge on each copper, even though there's only one, has a plus two charge. Looking at this copper, okay, I have copper, and what's the charge on each copper here? Plus one. So we want to write what the charge is on each copper atom. That's present. Oxide. Okay. Now, here's what we don't do. We don't go, well, there's two coppers, and each one has a plus one charge, so we're going to make that a Roman numeral two. Well, if you do that, now the names are the same. So this tells us what the charge on each copper is. So that when I actually look at it and do it, okay, I'll, so I've got copper with a plus one charge, and then I have oxide, which is oxygen, that has what charge? Minus two. And I can say to myself, oh, okay, well, if that is a plus one and that's a minus two, that's not balanced, so I'm going to need two of those. So we, again, let the formula tell us what the charge is. Okay. Isn't that fun? No. <laughs> this is the best one. So let's take a look at the practice problems on here. Okay, and I essentially went over all that already. So, yeah, so the example there, right by the middle hole punch, says, how would you name the ionic com compound COCl2? So, COCl2. So, we have cobalt, good. Okay, so cobalt, and I heard chloride. Now, here's what I would recommend. Still do the charges. And we're going to let the non-metal tell us what the charge on the metal is. So what's the charge on each chlorine? It's in group 7A, right? N negative 1. And how many do we have? Two. Two of them. So what must the charge on this single cobalt be? Plus 2. Now, before you write down the Roman numeral, you should look at your periodic table and say, does cobalt have a plus 2 charge? And if you look at cobalt, what are my potential charges? 2 or 3. So 2 is a good number, so we'll use it. Okay. So you check it, or I'm sorry, you actually do the work, and then you check it before you write it in. So this is cobalt 2 chloride. Oh, yeah. Let's look at it. Practice problem at the bottom there. I, S, N, and let's see, N, O, 3, is that a 2? Yep. Okay. What is S, N? Um, 10. 10. Very good. Oh, okay. okay. So we have 10, and what is the N, O, 3? Nitrate. Okay. Now, let's let the charges work for us here. What's the charge on each nitrate? Negative one, and we have two of those, right? Yep. So what must the charge on the 10 be? Two. Plus two, and then check and see. Is that a possible charge? Yeah, yeah it can either be two or four. Be so. Two there you go. Now, when you say it, would you say 10 two nitrate? I would say 10 Roman numeral two nitrate. I don't want to say 10 two because somebody might say, oh, he said there's a two there. Yeah, that. So that's why I always say 10 Roman numeral 2 or 10 with a positive 2 charge 
Nitrate. Two to the positive two charge. Nitrate. <laughs> Ten Roman numeral. I apologize that I'm not fancy enough for your class. You're a learner. You'll get there. Hey, I have, I have faith in one. Cu two Co three. So what is Cu again? Kappa. And Co three. Carbonate. Carbonate. Good. And let's let the non-metal tell us. So what's the charge on carbonate? And how many coppers do we have? Two of them, right? So what must the charge on each copper be? Plus one. Very good. Okay. Now that Roman numeral doesn't tell us how many we have. It tells us what the charge on each metal is. Okay. The charge on each metal. That's why they use Roman numerals, make it special. Yeah. All right, Ni. Ni, Ni. Uh, your mind is playing tricks on you. This is what you really should be seeing. Okay. So this way, Ni, Ni, three, Roman numeral two, because nickel doesn't have a plus one charge. So nickel, and I, Microsoft Word, I don't know why it does that. It doesn't understand chemistry. No, right? So nickel nitrate, what's the charge on each nitrate? Negative one. How many are there? Two. Two of them. So what must the charge on the nickel be? Positive two. Plus two. And what are my potential charges for nickel? Two or three. So... That's the way, the reason why it's written on your paper wouldn't be acceptable because we don't have a plus one charge. We'll fix that. Oh, uh, oh what well, is that? I'm going to erase this. What, chromium oxide? Mm. CR2O3. Okay, so we have chromium oxide. Chromium. Oxide. Okay. Now, what's the charge on oxygen? Negative two. Well, we have three of them, right? Again, it's in group 6A. And then chromium, we have two of those. So it needs to be a plus three. And then looking at the sheet, chromium can either be six, three, or two. So three is a good number. Okay. So chromium, Roman numeral three, oxide. So again, whatever the charge is, that's for each chromium atom. Notice that there's not a six there or a two there that represent how many. Because again, if I didn't give you this formula, okay, and we're going from the name to the formula, then we go, okay, well, we have chromium, we have oxygen, we know oxygen has a negative two charge, we know chromium has a plus three, well, that definitely doesn't equal zero. So we need two of those and three of those. Now I'm rocking. Okay. So let the information tell you how to write the formula. All right. Uh, Fe2O3. Fe2O3. So we definitely have some iron, some oxide. We have two of those and three of those. And what's the charge on each oxygen? So what must the charge on the iron be? Plus three. That is possible. Because iron can either be a two or a three charge. Good. All right. Everybody good so far? AgNO3. Okay, what's the charge on the nitrate? Negative one. Silver? Plus one, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have silver nitrate. Now, what do we do here? Put a one in there. Look on your periodic table. How many oxidation numbers does it have? One. A single oxidation number. Everybody that knows anything about chemistry knows that silver has a plus one charge. So no Roman numeral. Okay. It's just like what we did the first time. 
where we looked at group 1A, those all have a plus 1. We looked at group 2A, those all have plus 2. We looked at group 3, they all have a plus 3. Everybody that does chemistry, including yourselves, with the periodic table knows that. So we don't have to, we don't have to tell them the charge because it's given. Okay. Perfect. If it only has one oxidation number, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yeah, oxidation number. What's PO? I don't know. PO4? PO4. What's PO4? Yeah. All right, so let's do this. How many phos or what's the charge on phosphate? One, three. And how many do we have? Two of those. So what must the charge be on tungsten here? Six. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Yes. Good. Okay. So good old tungsten, Roman numeral six, phosphate. Don't you guys feel smart knowing how to write that? I feel smart just using numerals. <laughs> All right. So that's going from the formula to the name. Let's flip it. Oh, there's more. Oh, oh my. There's more, friends. Oh, my. All right, at the bottom of the page, at the bottom of the page it says, how would you write the ionic formula for cobalt-3-sulfate? Okay. Cobalt-3-sulfate. So what's the charge on the cobalt? Plus 3. And what's sulfate? SO4 with a... Negative two. So does that equal zero? No. So we need that and that. Okay. So again, I think it's a little easier going from the name to the formula rather than from the formula to the name. Okay. So there's our example. Flip the page over. Look at page ten. Uh, example number eight. There it says nickel three carbonate. So nickel again is. Ni and it has a plus three charge. And what is it? Carbonate? CO3. And what's the charge on carbonate? Negative two. Good. So again, two and three. Parenthesize the carbonate and two nickels. So Ni2, parentheses CO3, close parentheses three. So that's nickel. Roman numeral three, carbonate. Bismuth five acetate. Try that one on your own. Try that one on your own. Let's see how good you guys are. And don't peek up here. Bismuth five acetate. Well, what's bismuth, first of all? Okay, good. Yes, I have that one memorized. Sulfate, SO4. Well, Mr. Carter, if I understand you're in the middle of it, so you wouldn't really know what you're doing. Yeah, well, you have them all memorized. I have them all memorized. I got that. Gold is a U. Remember, there's no G in gold. Good. So after you do that, we'll do the uh, gold three sulfate. SO4. I'm having fun with these threes and twos. Ten four nitrate. So 10 4 nitrate. Yeah, okay. Lead nitride, right? Yeah. Ah, nitride. So it's nitrogen, drop the O gen and put I, so nitride. And what's the charge on nitrogen? Oh, it's quiet. Two. <laughs> Minus three, very good. It's a group five A. And the lead has a charge of two. two. In this case, it has a charge of two. Could be four, but we'll go with the two since it has a Roman numeral two. So 
we need two of those, three of those. How many parentheses do we need? Zero. Good. Don't do it. Little iron oxide here. Iron Roman numeral two oxide. So how do we need to bounce this? Done. And then mercury oxide. Oh, look at you. Is this good? Oh, no. 